Welcome to a new vlog. Today I'm going to be presenting this 10-channel uh, valve actuator board that I built with the purpose of controlling the individual circuits of my floor heating system. The best part is that this is based on an ESP32 which makes it compatible with the open source project Tasmota uh, which in turn makes it compatible with my home assistant home automation project. So it should be very easy for me to integrate this into the uh, smart home uh, automation project of my apartment. So like I mentioned the need for such a valve actuator circuit started when I installed floor heating into my apartment and if you ask why I didn't use one of the commercially available options I don't like them they're expensive and they typically only work with their closed source ecosystem and I wanted something that runs open source so I can control and customize the various aspects. I have a total of nine circuits and these circuits have different lengths and the rooms have different sizes so putting the same volume of water through all circuits is going to result in uneven heating. This issue can be mitigated by fine-tuning the individual flow valves on the intake of each circuit but that setting seems to vary with the pressure it gets from the pump and doesn't allow fine granular control over the temperature of a specific room which is what I want to achieve with this uh, project. So I started by buying these electrical valve actuators and I don't know why but at first I thought these use some kind of servo motors inside because these sit on the return valves which have these actuator pins that need to be pressed with quite a lot of force to close the circuit. But after receiving these I realized they are actually working on a different principle. They have some sort of wax cartridge and a small resistive heating element inside and when you apply power to the heating element it slowly heats up the wax cartridge and the wax expands because of that and that creates the force to actuate the uh, uh, pin on the valve through this uh, gray part here. A pretty simple and neat solution. The specs of these uh, particular valves say that they are uh, 230 volts rated with an inrush current of uh, 350 milliamps and these are important because we need to design the circuit to accommodate for the specs. And first I thought about using relays which would also make the board a bit more universal allowing it to control uh, other stuff as well but then I realized that slim relays are pretty expensive and hard to get these days and I couldn't fit them uh, inside the enclosure I wanted to use. And I plan to use uh, one of these uh, DIN rail enclosures which I found for uh, cheap on AliExpress and the space inside here was limited. Uh, I just couldn't fit the 10 relays. So I decided to ditch the relay idea and instead use Triax to actuate uh, these valves. Generally you'll find circuits where opto tracks are used to drive the force tracks which are rated for higher currents but I tried to find a solution that would be less complicated and use less parts and thus be easier and cheaper to assemble. I could have used solid state relays but once again they were kind of expensive and uh, there are stock availability issues right now so I decided not to use those either. Instead I decided to use an opto triac which had just enough driving current capability to cover the needs of my actuators. And I found this BC3223 opto triac which seemed to be designed to drive this kind of light loads. It had up to 1.2 amps of on-state RMS current rating. Even though I wouldn't be getting anywhere close to that because I've measured uh, these valve actuators and there's only a very brief inrush current value of up to 300 milliamps but in less than I don't know a couple of uh, hundred of milliseconds it drops in the uh, 20 milliamp range and continues to drop as the uh, heater inside of these gets hotter and hotter and also this track had a low enough forward voltage and typical forward current on the input side that made it okay to be driven from a 3.3 volt IO and best of all it was available in stock for cheap. I couldn't get it in a surface mount package as that was not available in stock only as a through hole uh, package but that's something I could live with. So I settled on this track. And another important detail here is that these tracks are not zero crossing, not unless you get the A variant which was not available in stock when I got these, but given that they will only be uh, driving a simple uh, re relatively low current resistive heater that shouldn't matter much, uh, but in general if you can get a zero crossing track 
go for that. I knew I wanted to use the valve actuator system in my home automation system, so I designed it to be based on an ESP32 microcontroller, and this way it would be uh, Tasmota compatible. I use uh, the open source project Tasmota to flash all of my ESP based uh, smart relays and sensors that I have in my home. So I had my basics. Uh, decided for this project but I also had to sort out the ESP32 power rail because the ESP32 runs on 3.3 volt. Now I decided to use an AC to DC converter. Uh, I needed it to be cheap. It had to have good specs and fit inside my enclosure and I could have used one of those that output 3.3 volt directly and drive the ESP32 uh, but I had trouble finding one in stock with the correct output power rating and dimensions to uh, fit inside my enclosure because as you can see it kind of has these features and the um, the modules that I, I was I was finding uh, that output 3.3 volts were actually higher in, in this section where I couldn't fit anything higher. So instead I went with this uh, 5 volt output model and then I added a 3.3 volt LDO to step it down for the 3.3 volt required uh, to power the ESP32. This way I will also have a 5V rail just in case I ever need to power something off 5 uh, volt later on. I also added a few protection features, uh, some fuses, varistors, capacitor discharge resistors on the input. I added some snubber circuit um, on the output of the triax. Even though I have just a resistive load, I wanted it to be safe just in case I end up powering something else through these triax. I designed the PCBs using KiCad and you can find a link in the description below to my GitHub repository. If you'd like to make your own PCBs, you can download the source files from GitHub. Next, I ordered these uh, PCBs from PCBWay.com, which is the official provider of printed circuit boards for the Voldog channel. Same as always, they delivered in time with superb quality. And I did not go for gold plating with these boards just because it's not needed and it would be uh, an extra cost added. But as you can see, I did a bunch of uh, cutout slots in the PCBs just to separate the uh, high voltage side from the low voltage side and also to uh, help with um, natural cooling through convention for example under the uh, DC to DC converter. Technically the ESP32 runs isolated from the uh, mains voltage because we have this um, AC to DC uh, isolated converter which is generating the 5 volt rail uh, powering the ESP32 through the LDO and we have the optically controlled triax which uh, once again separate the mains voltage from the low voltage side. But still extra care should be observed when handling this circuit and programming it. There are still lots of mains exposed points on the back of this board uh, that could give you a, a little shock if you touch them. So if you want to be extra safe, what I would recommend is that you uh, power the board uh, through a, an external 3.3 volt regulator while handling and programming the board and you could be supplying that 3.3 volt to the board through any of the uh, available connections like through this one. Programming is done through the usual uh, Volink 6 pin connector so you'll have to provide your own USB to serial converter with auto reset functionality for a smooth programming procedure uh, but I've also added a uh, one wire connector for adding external ambient sensors and there's also a, a nice squared C pin header for the same purpose of connecting external temperature sensors should I ever need to enhance this uh, board and add temperature sensing. And if you were wondering why my AC to DC converter is mounted upside down, that's because I messed up the footprint design and got it mirrored. In a previous video, I blamed that on the poorly designed Chinese datasheet because it wasn't clear if it was a top or bottom view of the component and I nearly got lynched in the comments by the mob because of saying that. Like, I should have been doing this and that which would have prevented this kind of issue and sometimes I'm happy I'm doing this on the web instead of real life because who knows, they might have thrown rocks at me or something like that if this was happening in real life. So now back to our circuit. Everything is uh, functional. I have the board flashed with Tesmota and I'll add the template code to my GitHub repo if you want to just copy and paste that. 
I basically have the uh, uh, 10 outputs uh, defined as relays and I can control them through MQTT from my home assistant server. Everything fits inside this DIN rail enclosure and I have a plan for uh, building some DIY light pipes that would expose uh, these LEDs which are connected to each of the uh, channels to the uh, top of the ex uh, enclosure but I'm waiting for some materials to be delivered for that purpose and then I can design like a 3D printed jig to hold the light pipes. I can also 3D print something to extend this uh, tactile switch to the uh, front panel so I can actuate it from the um, uh, front panel but I don't really have a purpose for this switch yet as everything is controlled via MQTT I, I really don't think I'm going to ever use this switch now I just need to install a DIN rail near the actuator valves and the distributor circuit and um, I can install this and hook up all of the valves and start building the automation scheme what I basically need is an automation where I can set the desired temperature per each room which is monitored by ambient sensors placed in each of the rooms and whenever one of these rooms is below the preset threshold I need to send a command to the main boiler pump to turn on that relay and then actuate the actual valve for that particular uh, circuit to start heating and when all of the rooms are above the threshold it should also turn off the main pump boiler relay which is a separate unit even though the source files are provided and you can make your own uh, just be aware that this is a DIY project there is an effort required on your side to configure this and get it working in your particular setup and there is also the risk of electrical shock because the board is using mains voltages so if you don't feel comfortable working with mains voltages I would advise against building one yourself and lastly because this is a DIY project with no safety ratings it's best if you don't leave it running unattended as I am not responsible for any consequences it might cause but I believe that is also the beauty of open source hardware and software people can take a good look at the project and they can judge for themselves how good of a solution is this for their particular purpose and if you'd like to get one of these ready assembled boards I think I still have parts to build another two or three units so let me know in the comments and I will add them to my Tindy shop I would really appreciate your feedback in the comments below uh, let me know what you think about this project about the different design decisions that I've made how you would have done it or what improvements could be made I would be happy to hear all of that in the comments below also just hit that like button to help the channel grow so I can continue publishing open source projects like this one for free and if this was useful in any way you could also consider to support the channel on Patreon with as little as one dollar per month and with that it's time to end this video thank you for watching and I will see you next time